Welcome back everyone. And in this module, what I'm going to show is a little bit of an addendum to my green screen roundup. And instead, what we're going to do is look at using a green screen and your PowerPoint slides and do this floating head effect sans anything special other than zoom. All right, so let's dive in. So at the time of this recording, which it's literally the second day of the quarter, uh, there is an update uh, that is for at least on the Mac side of Zoom and presumably also on the PC side, uh, where it's this 5.3 update. Now in it, there's a few features that are added. One is studio effects, which I'll save till the end, but there was another one that was added, which allows you to have your PowerPoint as a virtual background. So let me show you. Here's a PowerPoint that I have that I'd be using for asynchronous or even an asynchronous class, which I'll get to at the end as well. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and keep this open and I have it saved right here on my desktop so I can easily access it. I'm going to go ahead and go into Zoom and I'm going to go ahead and start my meeting. Now I'm going to show this as a dummied call. So I'm the only one that's going to be in this for this demonstration, but you could do this for a synchronous uh, class as well. In this methodology, you technically could do this for a synchronous class or as an asynchronous lecture capture if you needed something ad hoc. Remember that in Zoom, we can record things both to the cloud if you have the pro account or to your local machine, even if you have the, the normal free account. So let me go ahead and show what this would look like for synchronous and then also how you can do this as an asynchronous capture. Now bear in mind, I'm building off of what I've already covered in my module on using Zoom for podcasting, very similar setup, but instead of using it for audio, this is going to be more tailored for video. You'll, my, my, my almost trademarked uh, green screen is already behind me. Zoom allows you to do this effect with or without a green screen. It just, if you have a green screen, the key algorithm, which allows it to see the special green that's behind me, works a little bit better. So if you're using a lot of hand gestures, having a green screen and, and good lighting, like I've mentioned in previous modules, is going to be right up your alley if you're going to be doing a lot more demonstration. If you're just going to be doing the standing and floating head bit, really you could do it with or without a green screen, which is really kind of cool. So what I'm going to go ahead and hit is my screen share. Now in screen share, you'll notice that there is uh, a basic and advanced and files. And that's the thing that a lot of a lot of people miss is that you can toggle in between not just your sources, which is what are is in actually in the panel, but you can also go across the top. If I go to over to advanced, you'll notice that there's this new feature called virtual slides as a background. And it notice that it also has that nice colorful tag that says beta. Zoom's putting in a ton of new features and they're really beta testing it. So this is not, you might find some bugs, your mileage may vary, see store for details, but it is a cool feature that hopefully they do flesh out more because it would, it would help us in academia. I'm going to go ahead and hit slides as virtual background and I'm going to go ahead and hit share. Now, when I do this, it's going to ask what presentation and I'm going to go ahead and hit the one that I put right on my desktop and I'm going to go ahead and hit open. Now, some geek speak for you. What's happening is, is that really Zoom is reaching in and grabbing your PowerPoint and making it a PDF. So keep that in mind. If you have any special media, so for instance, if you have some audio or video clips, they may or may not work uh, in this presentation mode. So just keep that in the back of your mind by using this. It's really just converting your PowerPoint into a PDF and then setting it as the virtual background for you. So as you can tell, look, I'm free floating. It's kind of fun, right? And because I have a green screen, you can tell where my green screen ends. Now, if you're not familiar with green screen settings, let me show you where that's at. If we come over to the Zoom menu on the Mac and on the PC, it's in a very similar spot. You're just going to your preferences. I'm going to go to Zoom and I'm going to go to preferences. Over on the left hand side, you're going to go straight down to where it says background and filters. Now, when you're there, you'll notice that it's already picking the, the, the background because I already have this checkbox already set, which is green screen. If you don't have that, you'll notice that it still works really pretty good. Just notice that my hand kind of gets this weird effect because again, it's not looking for that specific green to cut you out. But if you're just doing the floating bit, this looks pretty good actually. So I'm going to go ahead and keep my green screen off just so that if you don't have one, this is what it would look like. Now, bear in mind, I do have lighting and I've mentioned this in other modules. Do make sure that you have uh, two, one, two, maybe even three lights to kind of better light you. The more light that you have on you, the better the algorithm works to catch you in the foreground. And that's kind of what this algorithm does. It looks for a foreground object and cuts you out. So the other thing that I want to point out is, because it was in the update notes is studio effects because it's on this panel. 
I'm going to say academically speaking, just avoid it like the plague, but I could see Zoom building in more features in this area. So that's why I wanted to show it. Right now, if I hit Studio Effects Beta, you get this pop out and really it's Instagram filters, but if you need to beautify yourself, for instance, I don't have enough of a beard. So I can add more beardage to myself, which I think I, I trump even a filter. Academically speaking, I would avoid it like the plague, but I could see Zoom building in added features, maybe even uh, simulated light effects like we see in iOS for some of the higher end iPhones. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off. And now, like magic, I now have my presentation. I am not using my green screen. I'm, I'm, I'm keen, but I'm not using my green screen. So I could just have a simple blank wall behind me and I could go through my presentation live in a synchronous class. Now, the other thing I want to point out is let's say you wanted to use this because you like this effect and you like the, the look of it. You could actually use Zoom to capture this as an asynchronous piece of content. So if I were just in a call, just me alone, and I wanted to use this as a video recording, much like I mentioned in the podcast using Zoom for podcasting uh, module, what I can do is just simply hit the record button down on the bottom. If you have the pro account, you can save it up to your cloud. I'm going to go ahead and just use it as the local recording on my hard drive. And when I do, I can go through my presentation and I'm recording up here on the top left. You'll see that it's recording. And I can go through my presentation. Welcome to the AV tactics for the at-home educator. And all I need to do down here at the bottom is hit next, goes to the next slide. And everything now, because I'm not in a live class, if I was, all of my students would be seeing my presentation and hearing me. Because I'm dummying this class and there's nobody in here, I'm just using this as a video recorder. So I can go through and talk about, you know, this is WordPress and all this other jazz. Zoom doesn't allow you to do any editing. It's not like Screencast-O-Matic or Panopto or anything like that. So you are really just making a video file. You will still have to edit it later if you have any mistakes. But if you're a one-take wonder, awesome. You can use this all in one take. Let's say I was completely done. I would go ahead and hit stop recording at the bottom. And you'll notice that Zoom tells you that the recorded file is being held until the meeting is ended. I'm gonna go ahead and hit end recording or end the call, I should say. End the meeting for all. And then if you're not familiar with this or you haven't seen the STC module on podcasting with Zoom, you get this conversion. And what this does is it creates the MP4 and puts it onto your local hard drive. It'll open it up in, in your browser, your file browser, and you can see that there's my Zoom call MP4, and here is that video file. And quite frankly, it's pretty clean. You can tell that uh, I'm not using my green screen, and the algorithm does a pretty good job cutting myself out. So that is the new effects that are in the new Zoom. And as I said before, avoid the studio ones. They're kind of kitschy. They're kind of Instagrammy. But uh, do try out if you're doing a lot of presentations and you like that floating head effect. Try that, uh, try that new virtual backgrounds for PowerPoint. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me at the Student Technology Center or at barsaa at www.edu.